What's up, my peeps? Happy bunny. Happy Easter. These are like bunnies or something. I miss eating peeps. I didn't eat those you know, bunny peeps on Easter. Okay, but anyway, I want to talk about my plan to turn $1,500 into over $40,000 in one year. Okay, now I know you might be thinking, oh, um, that's, I'm, f I'm just full of it. That's a load of bull. Okay, or is it? Let me show you some data, some data. All right, so in this chart that I have here, all these numbers, so I wanted to know trading penny stocks, if I make 10% per week trading penny stocks on E-Trade, with only three day trades. And so a day trade is if I buy and sell in the same day. How, if I start with $1,500, um, how long will it take me if I go all in to get over the PDT rule? And so the PDT rule is if I have under $25,000 in my trading account, I could only do three day trades. Now, I used to have a broker with U Stock Trade to get over the PDT rule. Um, but that broker, oftentimes, the number one stock on my watch list, I wasn't able to trade with that broker. So I went back to E-Trade. I believe E-Trade is a better broker to trade penny stocks than you stock trade. So with E-Trade, so on the first line here, I said 20 percent position so if I started with fifteen hundred dollars on the top and then let's say I only bet twenty percent of my account so with fifteen hundred I start by betting like three hundred dollars I wanted to see can I get over the commission fees and with me right now for E-Trade, if I buy, I pay $5 in commission fees. And then if I sell, I pay $5 in commission fees. So for the first line, I notice if I do like the first trade, I going only like a $300 position, I lose 5% and then I gain 5%. And then I gain 10%. I notice it's basically a break even. I won't really get over the commission fees. And it, so that was the first line. So then where it says month one, I started to uh, do like, okay, you see the pattern, like you one line minus 5%, plus 5%, plus 10%. And so that's one week and then, you know, four weeks in a month. And so uh, you could see the numbers then. So that's what I did, including the $5, um, the $10 commission fee. Okay, so then like after a month, if uh, I, uh, okay, let's say I do, you know, if I lose 5%, then I make 5%, and then I make 10%. So we can see after one month, I I could turn like 1500 into $2,000. And then you can just go down and see, you know, after two months, 2700 After three months, 3800 After four months, 
you know, over 5,000, after six months, over 7,000. Okay, and so that's five months, and now, so six months, we notice we start, it's like compound interest, it starts, it start making more money quicker. So now after six months, 11 thousand dollars seven months sixteen thousand dollars eight months twenty three thousand nine months thirty three thousand and ten months i'm over forty eight thousand dollars okay and then you might be thinking oh well you know what makes you think you can make ten percent a week okay oh if you can make ten percent a week trading stocks Everybody would be doing that, you know, so that's a load of BS, and that's what you may be thinking, okay, but now let me, so first here, let me, now I'll show you my trade alerts, I took screenshot of this from E-Trade. Um, app on my phone okay and so as you can see on the bottom on on the on 215 2019 that was when I funded my account and I funded my account with fifteen hundred dollars and now after all my losses I am my net worth and then you can see, you know, on the bottom, the date. But my net worth is 11, um, 1,000, like uh, $183. Okay, so I lost about $400 since that time and then on the bottom you can see it shows the last time when the market was open and the market was closed on good friday and so the closing price and the date was on 4 18 2019 okay and then these are my trade alerts so you can pause the video if you wanted to you know take a look but i'm just showing you these trade alerts to hopefully show you that i'm not making these numbers up okay and then it will end on 418 so now more trade alerts and again you can pause if you want to see and so then this is now the last page. So on 418, um, that was the trade alerts. Um, so now on my notes here, I, I basically kept a track of my track record. And so my first trade I put on the first week, I did one trade, I made 6%. So, okay, so I didn't really want to count that as a week. But what I want to do first before I try to go all in is I want to see, can I have going only 20% of my account? Um, can I have for a month, for four weeks, can I average 10% a week? and to make, yeah, can I average about 10% a week for a month? If I can, then I will start to go all in. But if I do not stay disciplined and I have a loss more than greater than 10% loss, and I know it's because I wasn't staying disciplined, I will restart my month. So let's say I have like three weeks, oh, I did 10%, but then on the fourth week I had a 20% loss. I'm going to restart it. Now I have to go again four more weeks. Can I stay disciplined, cut my losses quickly, and have, 
you know, average 10%. That's what my test month will be. Um, so anyway, so here are the trades. And uh, so from the alerts, I, I wrote these out. And so now this is like kind of the first week here. I did an afternoon trade. So just on one trade, we see, oh, I made 14%. Okay, so this is telling me right away it's possible to average 10% a week. Okay, and then I did an overnight trade, 6%. But then here I had a big loss. I did an overnight trade and then I lost 20%. And so on the week, I basically broke even. Um, but anyway, since I know on this day that when I had the 20% loss on RKDA, it wasn't, um, that wasn't a good trade. Or I didn't stay disciplined, so I have to restart. And so then, okay, next week I had a 7% loss and then I was starting to write you know, some stuff here. I'm not going to go into great detail over the patterns, but, you know, I was saying like, oh, maybe if, you know, I use a bat, make sure I use a bathroom, eat breakfast, and all that before I trade, that might help. And then here, I just happen to take a screenshot of this one trade here. Um, but right now, I'm not going to go over all my the charts of the trades that I did. I just want to show you, you know, so anyway, here on the 5th, I had another big loss, and I know I wasn't staying disciplined. I was, I remember, you know, that I had a big loss because I had trouble controlling my emotions. Okay, and so anyway, on the week, it resulted in a 28% loss, and mainly because I had one trade that I had a 28% loss. Okay, but once again, we see here on the 7th, on this afternoon trade on top, um, when I traded SEEL, we can see in the afternoon I made 17%. Okay, so I know if I stay disciplined, I can make about, it's possible to make about 10% a week. Okay, so anyway, now next week, so here on the bottom, you know, I put after the week, I put, you know, my profit or loss. So that was after the week, a 28% loss. So now this week, I only stuck to afternoon trades. And so we can see in the afternoon on 3.13, I made 18%. On 3.14, I made 10% on ATOS. And so if I were to just not have done the last trade, which was my biggest loss so far, or a 29% loss, if I didn't do that trade, I was up 28% on the week. And my goal was just to uh, make average 10% a week. But anyway, this trade, I'm not going to right now go over the chart. And um, But I know I didn't cut my loss quickly. And I was having trouble, excuse me, controlling my emotions. So anyway, okay, another big loss, so I restart the week now, or the month. I have to have um, four months without it, you know, like greater than a 10% loss. And averaging about 10% per week before I try to go all in. And then the next week I didn't make any trades. So after the 15th of... Uh, um, March, I didn't do a trade for a week. And then on March 26, okay, I started, I did an afternoon trade. And I saw, okay, minus 4%. Okay, I'm, that's all right. And then I did another afternoon trade. 
plus 14 percent so now you know with the two trades combined on the 27th i'm up 10 percent on the week but then on the 28th i had another big loss and when i looked at the pattern it was similar to a similar chart to slno when i got my biggest loss 39 percent so i noticed there's a pattern to my loss and the you know i'm not cutting my losses quickly i had a lot of time before i was down on the 28th of march um before i was down 26 percent i had a lot of time to cut my losses to make it where it could have been a small loss like this loss on the 26th of march was which was only four percent okay so anyway you know after the week that week i was down 16 percent so now i restart the month and so now on this time i started doing uh, um, morning trades so on this morning trade you know sometimes in the morning they move fast and so this one i did cut my loss i considered it to be a quick loss even though it was nine percent but in the morning the stocks tend to move faster and then i did an overnight hold i made eight percent um on this on the same stock there okay and then in the morning i did a morning trade now and then i made 21 percent gain on the morning and this one it fit one of my patterns um, right now i'm not going to go over the patterns and the charts right now i'm just going to show you the track record okay and so then i had on the fourth i did a morning trade and it resulted on y r i v resulted in a seven percent loss and then on the fourth on four four i uh, toward the end of the day i have the time in parentheses and california time and the market closes at one so this one i was able to buy after hours i'm at 127 why riv and i held overnight and that one was a one percent loss and then i did another overnight hold but anyway now after the week after this week since i even though one time i had a nine percent loss but since for the most part notice on this week i didn't have a big loss like you know, 26% on, on 328 on CLWT. On this week, I didn't, I was staying disciplined. I didn't have a big loss. And then my big gain, the 21%, you know, put me up on the week 12%. Okay, so good week. So now next week was kind of similar. I did a mix. So on this one on Friday, on four or five i held v t l overnight and then i sold it on monday on the four eight and so then i started with a seven percent gain that was um, and then i did another overnight hold and the reason why i was doing over i'm doing overnight holds here is because an overnight hold it doesn't count as a day trade so i can do if I buy, you know, toward the end of the day, then sell the next morning, that wasn't in the same day, so I can do as many overnight holds as I want, plus I still get three additional day trades. Okay, and then, so then on the 9th, on ATAI, we notice now this was, uh, is, you know, sim in the morning, it was, you know, similar big gain like on the previous week. I got, you know, plus 19%. Okay, and then I did, you know, plus 6% on the next overnight hold on ATAI. And then on 410 on INPX. 
Um, I did a morning trade, but I lost 8%. And then I did another morning trade on 412, and I lost 7%. But since I did stay disciplined and these losses were small, they were under 10%, um, you know, I was still up over 14%, or I made 14% on the week. Okay, and so this just shows you that sometimes you don't even need to be necessarily, you can be, you know, half of the time right and half of the time wrong, but if you cut your losses quickly, you can still be up on the week. And so see here, like if we look at, you know, the number of losses on this week from starting on 4-8, so let's just say, okay, I had one win, um, and then two wins, three wins. Okay, and then for losses, starting on the fourth, on 4-8, um, for that week, or, let's see, I had one loss. Two losses, three losses. So I had like three wins, three losses. But since I kept my losses small, um, I was still profitable. So that's why it's important to keep my losses small. So anyway, okay, I was doing good these two weeks. Okay, I got two weeks. So I'm showing I can average. It's possible here. You know, it's not luck. Now I repeated similar results as the previous week. Um, this week, or, you know, and so, so then now finally, my last week of trading so far, um, I had, you know, this loss was 11%, I did two trades on the 18th of uh, this month, um, for this week, so two trades only, one was in the morning, and then one I bought in the morning, and then sold almost close to market close. And that resulted in an 11% loss. Um, and then on the week, you know, but since, anyway, since I know I was kind of being stubborn on this last trade, I'm going to reset my month, so I'm going to have to be profitable for another um, month having weeks you know similar like these two weeks where I'm cutting my losses quickly not having them bigger than 10 percent um, and seeing if you know I can average about 10 percent and we see one week 12 percent next week 14 percent so I know my goal is possible and so and I saw in the, that table when I did the math, I saw in just, you know, 10 months, if I'm going all in and averaging 10% each week for 10 months, I can turn 1500 into over $40,000. So that's my plan. And so now on this week, so I explain now to you the importance of cutting losses quickly. So that's rule number one. And the most important rule when trading penny stocks to cut losses quickly. And now in this next trade, on the morning trade, I want to show you the next important rule, which is to take profits quickly. So now I'll just review these last two trades and then on the, you know, the chart. And then I could end the video. So now on MBIO, let me see if I show you the chart here. So this was the chart on MBIO. And let me see. So when I bought, it was in the morning right at 6.33, three minutes after the market opened. Okay, and so that's when I bought, and then, and you know, you can always, uh, or I showed you my trade alerts already, so that, you, you know, I'm not just making these trades up. Um, 
Okay, but then I sold at 643 or 41. So anyway here, and I'll just show you the importance of, uh, you know, rule number two. So let's see on this candle here. We see this was on 633. So at 633, I bought around 8, or I bought, I think, at 870. So right about maybe there, or right about, you know, here like 870 and then I remember like two minutes three minutes later or I bought at 633 so two minutes later I was up over 10 percent and I remember I had my order ready to sell at nine um nine dollars and ninety cents and that would have made me up over 10 percent and the stock was, you know, over $10 and I was ready to sell. But, you know, I wanted to, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, I want 20% like, you know, those other times in the morning when I made, you know, 20%. You know, and then, uh, you know, I had, but you see, you know, I went and then uh, my profit just pretty quickly went away. And I sold it at 641 for basically like a break even. Okay, so I, you know, if, yeah, if I would have just sold there for, you know, my 10%, or it would have been like about 11% gain I could have made, but it was break even. And then, you know, I noticed I was getting emotional and I was thinking, okay, I have another day trade. I'm just going to try to buy again on a dip and, you know, try to make just, you know, 10%, you know, so I can be, just have another week where I made about 10%. So, but I noticed, you know, I was getting emotional and then I bought at 7 44 at 6.42 and so now this was after it went since the opening price was around you know 7.80 and now I bought at 6.40 or at 7.42 um, so now the price it went red on the day because the price is lower than it opened at market open So, um, I bought at seven. So I bought at six forty-two at seven forty-four. Okay, so seven forty. Whoa, you're glitching on me. So anyway, at seven forty-four, I bought. And then, you know, here, there wasn't really any pattern here. Since there was already a big sell-off and the volume in the morning was, you know, higher than it was here, it's not likely that it's just going to break this resistant level and get back up to here. So when I bought at 640, around 6, you know, 44, like a $640 or 642, I was buying closer to resistance and there wasn't really, this didn't really fit any of my patterns here. I was just being, you know, upset that I missed out, you know, when I could have taken, like, been up 11% on the week. You know, I just bought again trying to make back what I thought felt like, oh, the stock market might owe me. But, you know, it never really went up that much higher. It just started going back down. And then, you know, I just kind of sold close to market close um, for an 11% loss. And anyway, I hope that you see that's the importance of taking profits quickly 
Okay, and so anyway, we see, so I'll reset now and I'll try to, I'll reset the month the next week and then I'll try to have four more weeks similar like these two weeks. And then after that test month, I will start to go all in and see if I can average 10. Or, and then, you know, so you'll see that the plan, um, you know, my plan now to make $40,000 turn fifteen hundred into forty thousand dollars in one year that seems possible i hope you can see that and understand that all right so now that you know my plan to turn fifteen hundred dollars into over forty thousand dollars in one year um, i'm gonna do, you know, maybe just weekly trade recaps and upload a trading video each week. But in the meantime, sometimes if I might do like just some other video that doesn't have anything to do with penny stocks if I have the time and I'm bored. And, uh, you know, I already did another video. Um, I'll see if I will upload it. So... You know, expect at least a trading video each week, and I might do some other random video if I have the time. Okay, bye.